Everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today, we're going to review the CGS Group Mod 9, which is basically a continuation or a Gen 2 version of the CGS Group Kraken 9. So if you haven't seen that review, I already reviewed the Kraken 9 and the Kraken 9 SK. So we're going to be following up with the Mod 9 and Mod 9 SK here shortly. So pretty close to this suppressor already that we reviewed. We went in really great detail on that video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put it in the description below. You guys can go watch that first. Uh, but today we're going to keep the studio portion a little bit more brief than usual. We're still going to cover the details where I just want to do more shooting with you guys so you can hear this can in action. So let's go ahead, open the box, get down to the details, and then we can hit that range. All right, taking it out of the box. Uh, this is what shipped to me. I believe it's gonna come with a manual. It also comes with a takedown tool, but this is a uh, nice O-ring engagement case. You can use it uh, to store cigars or something for travel if you want down the road. I usually keep my suppressors on the guns uh, instead of moving them around. And then of course, here is the takedown tool. So this is a standard CGS group takedown tool that you guys have already seen. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and cover the details. So, the new Mod 9 comes in an overall length of 7.7 inches, a diameter of 1.37 inches, and it weighs exactly 10 ounces. Now, as far as the material, starting from the back, we have a 17.4 uh, heat treated stainless steel piston, and then a 17.4 uh, heat treated stainless steel booster housing, and then the blast baffle itself is 17.4 heat treated. And then the subsequent baffles are 7075 T6 aluminum with a Type 3 hard coat anodizing, as well as the tube, the end cap, and then I believe the rear uh, cap here that surrounds the uh, piston, I believe that is heat treated as well. That's 17.4 heat treated stainless steel. So really high end materials here. We will open it up in just a second, but before we do, I want to cover the elephant in the room compare this to the older Kraken 9. Now, one of the things you're gonna see right off the bat, there is no more tube riding. Uh, so this is very important. Now that it's cleared through the ATF, they can now put the model engraving and your serial number here on the 17.4 heat treated blast or um, booster housing. So what that's gonna do is protect your investment no longer do you have the writing on the tube. If you have a catastrophic failure, the further along down the tube you are, uh, the higher probability you are of having a baffle strike or a bullet exit out of the tube, uh, which is bad for your tax stamp. So nothing bad can pretty much happen here. As you know, once the barrel is threaded, uh, it's gonna end about here. So the bullet's not gonna deviate out of that piston. So that piston actually goes to the start of the tube. So again, catastrophic failure could happen here, but not here, protecting your tax stamp. Uh, some things you'll see compared to the older one is the step down, the machining on the actual tube body itself has changed. It's a little bit different there. Uh, moving to the end cap, pretty similar. They just opened up some of the designs here on the front of the end cap, that's pretty much the same. And of course you have the different engraving on the actual booster itself, different design there. So all in all, just some slight tweaks and an improvement of the engraving location for the end user out there. As far as the pistons, those are unchanged. And now the three lug is finally available for those of you out there that are running MP5s and other nine millimeter carbines. Uh, fret no more, it is out. You can get it on their website. So let's go ahead and uh, take it down. So to take it down, it's pretty simple. It's uh, tool list for the rear, so you can swap the pistons with different thread pitches. Uh, this is a half by 28 on mine that's shipped. So you just kind of turn your finger into kind of a claw shape like this, and you just twist it off just like the old Kraken 9. So any of you out there that already have a Kraken 9, you're gonna be right at home here. And then here is your uh, piston assembly with spring. If you guys are curious on how this works, I have a video labeled uh, everything you want to know about silencers. Go ahead and check that out and I cover everything in detail including the history, operation, everything that has to do with firearm suppressors. So set that aside, 
turn it over here, use our takedown tool and it just interlocks with the holes in the front of the end cap. And once you get it loose, you can just go ahead and remove it the rest of the way by hand. And then we're good to go there. So the one of the baffles actually, when, when you install this, and I'll show you this in a minute, this is gonna compress your baffle stack. So this last one actually has a cut in it. So it kind of interlocks with the end cap as it's done being compressed. So I'm not sure if the old Kraken had that feature. I don't remember, don't quote me on that, but set that aside. So that is a 17 or a um, 7075 T6 aluminum baffle. And then we have, let's see, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the main baffles are 7075 T6 with a hard coat, with a uh, type three anodizing. And then your blast baffle is 17-4 heat treated stainless steel with a black nitride finish on it. Looks really good. These are the second generation Orion baffles. Uh, again, went into detail on the Kraken video. Uh, but these are kind of a continuation of the original Orion baffle uh, that Josh designed that was used on the Hydra and then the Kraken and now the Mod 9. So these are tweaked to pretty much negate all first round pop, which is great. And as you see here, these have, um, these are exactly the same. So you can, you know, if one is getting wear, which it shouldn't, but let's say baffle number two is getting peppered a little bit with unburnt gunpowder, you can kind of swap them around and uh, move them around the stack as need be. So as far as cleaning and maintenance, guys, pretty simple. Uh, no ultrasonic cleaner here. Um, you're going to have to just manually clean by hand with solvents and a brush. Don't need to be squeaky clean as usual. Just knock off the solid chunks and you're good to go. To reinstall, just line up your notches here in the baffles and stack like you would any other baffle stack. Again, one of the benefits of the Orion baffle is containing the uh, unburnt gunpowder and uh, carbon that would normally bond itself to the inner tube wall of your suppressor. We're making removal for cleaning pretty much impossible. So it will encapsulate, and I'll show some B-roll here for you guys. In this notch, they interlock with each other. That's what's gonna keep leakage, gas leakage and contaminant leakage from getting out of the baffle stack and uh, contaminating the tube wall. So. Again, this is something you're used to seeing if you're used to the Kraken line. If this is your first time seeing a CGS group review at all, if you're new to my channel, then you got some catching up to do because they make some really badass products. So now that we have the stack all assembled, obviously this is your blast baffle, so you're going to turn the tube over upside down, slide it down, and then put on your end cap, and then this is where it's going to compress and interlock so you don't have any issues uh, with baffle alignment when you shoot. So pretty pretty straightforward guys. Um, again, same performance as a Kraken 9. So this is gonna range on a nine millimeter host, a nine millimeter pistol from 116 decibels to 122 decibels depending on the ammo type. I know uh, uh, Glock 17 with the LAX 165 grain, formerly Hush ammo, uh, 116 decibels. Glock 17, with a suppressor, with 165 grain ammo, 116 decibels. I believe the slide shutting on a, Glock, on a Glock 17 is about 109 decibels, so not much louder than the action. Uh, when you're done there, you can either A, install your three lug system, or B, install your booster housing. Again, this is only to be used with a, a Browning type action. Okay, you don't wanna ever use a booster assembly on a fixed barrel. So if you plan on using it on just a fixed nine millimeter carbine, uh, use a spacer instead of the spring, which you can get from CGS group or the three lug mount if you have that type of barrel. So not rocket science. Again, if you're new to suppressors and you're new to the lingo and you wanna learn more, watch my video, everything you need to know about suppressors. All right, before we hit the range, just wanna cover a couple more details so you guys get the full picture of the Mod 9. Now much like the Kraken 9, which I'm removing right now from this STI, weapon is clear, safety on. Um, they again, same general design as a Kraken. All your weight 
of the suppressor is towards the host firearm, okay? Since these are all 17 or uh, 7075 T6 aluminum baffles, and you have your stainless blast baffle here with your stainless uh, booster assembly here, all that 17.4 holds all the weight. So when you hold it in your hand, it balances more towards your hand, towards the shooter. So uh, something definitely to take note of. Also, again, like the Kraken, this has 12 points of uh, point of impact shift adjustment. So to adjust it, you would uh, pull forward to compress the spring and rotate like a clock, dropping it into the next notch. And you can continue to do that until you can fine tune uh, the suppressor for your ammo type and host type. Uh, again, I know it sounds like a broken record. If you have no idea what point of impact shift is or clocking a suppressor, watch my video, everything you need to know about silencers. So uh, it's gonna answer all of your questions. All right, yeah, pretty much covers it for the studio, guys. You're probably wondering how much this costs. Uh, for normal people, this would be uh, $875 retail. So $875 retail, the MSRP on CGS Group's website. But my gold members on Patreon, of course, have a pro deal with CGS Group at 50% off. So uh, that puts you in the $400 range for this suppressor. And I can tell you right now, it's worth every bit of $900. And you're about to find out right now. Let's go ahead load up some host, load some ammo, and have an extended firing session out on the range. Quiet, man. So quiet, bro. Bolt's loud, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the can. No. That is a quiet can. Dirt again. Mm -hmm. Those yeah, are this, 147s? This, the bolt, I can hear like yeah, slapping back. Like, yeah. It has a really like, like a hollowish sound to it when yeah, it slaps back and forth. It's quiet though, the can's quiet. quiet. That sounded pretty cool. Yeah. That sounded really cool. <laughs> That's some Hollywood shit right there. By far, the STI with the Mod 9 is as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. Not 158. No, these are uh, the, one, the 147s, yeah.
was close to the camera. <laughs> Damn. Dude, that thing is so quiet, bro. Where, so, it, so what am I doing? Taking the ride? Yeah, ta <laughs> the mile? take the ride to the fence. Once, <laughs> once you hit barbed wire, stop. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can shoot through the barbed wire. Yeah. All right, so Kyle's making the walk. He has uh, 20 rounds in the STI of some Fioki 158 grain subsonic factory loaded stuff. And he's gonna walk to, it looks like 200 yards, just a little over 200 yards. He's gonna shoot at the berm to the left and right of the camera right here. So I had the microphone set up. Uh, you should be able to hear the flight of the bullet flying to the left and the right of the microphone. I'm gonna have him shooting pretty close to the camera without hitting it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go hide behind my truck, which is right there. I'm gonna hide behind that after I get focused here so we get a nice, sharp, clear image of Kyle. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's see what we got. That should be close enough. <laughs> He's out there filming with his phone. How come I always gotta walk the 300 yards to take the shots? And he gets to hang back under the shade of the truck. All right, so we are about 200 and some change yards. Sorry. There's Adam. Insert arrow now. Ding. Let me back out. And we're gonna be doing the uh, 2011 STI Hush Edition with the CGS Group Mod 9 and we're running uh, Fioki 158s. And uh, we're gonna see what it sounds like at 200 and some change. Now you're good, stay there! Stay right there! He's hiding by the truck. Waking me out, man. That sounded crazy. You like? Bro, it's just it's just a slap of the rifle, dude. This thing is so stupid quiet, it's not even funny. No first round pop at all, None. dude. None. Jump it. Yeah, none. There's no, there's there's no difference between the first and last. There's none. Absolutely. And you just shot 20 rounds. Yeah. All right, anytime you hear your favorite product has been changed, it certainly causes pause. Uh, especially back when the Glocks changed from the Gen 3s to the Gen 4s. Remember they changed the extractor and the ejector? That caused a lot of issues, a lot of failures to feed, stuff like that. So uh, when I heard that we were going to be changing the Kraken 9, my favorite 9mm can, uh, I was certainly concerned. But of course, I had nothing to worry about. Uh, the Mod 9 by far is the best sounding 9mm can I have ever heard. Um, all they did was just made some minor improvements. Uh, the biggest that I would have to say is moving the serialized portion from the tube to the booster housing. Now you're going to be safe there. And then um, 
no first round pop. So they tweaked the baffle stack a little bit more and there is zero first round pop. My boy Kyle is out here with me today. Uh, we did some goof, uh, goofing around on and off camera and we could not hear any discernible difference between the first shot through halfway through the mag through the end of the mag. The, from the first shot to the last is what I'm trying to say, sounds exactly the same and that is a lot of performance. Now we tried all different types of ammo on and off camera from 115 to 124 to 147 to 158. It sounds amazing. Even when you had the sonic crack of 115, the gun itself is not making any sound. All you're hearing is pretty much that. I mean, it's that quiet. So kudos to CGS Group for that. Uh, those of you out there that support the NFA Review Channel on Patreon, my gold members, you guys get half off. So 50% off any CGS Group product. So makes it quite the value to support the channel and an awesome company at the same time. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. The shoot is still on for November 9th, so you definitely don't want to miss that. CGS Group will be there. I'm sure they're going to give away a couple of these, uh, in fact. And uh, there's going to be a lot of other great companies out there. All the ammo on them included. A lot of great prizes. And, of course, we'll have a charity that we're going to hook up at the end of the day. So until then, click that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.